and welcome to the First United Methodist Church in Madisonville, Tennessee for our virtual service from the sanctuary. My name is Jan Johnson and I'd like to welcome our members and our guests to our 51st live streaming worship service on February 21st, 2021. The first Sunday in Lent. This Sunday is going to be different as our Reverend Keith Knight is feeling under the weather and we actually told him to stay home and rest. The crew here has divided up the responsibilities for today's service and we asked your patience as we adapt in real time. The First United Methodist Church of Madisonville, Tennessee during this streaming worship service is either one performing musical material published prior to 1925 and in the public domain or performing musical material by permission of CCLI. Appropriate credit is posted at the bottom of each slide displaying copyrighted material which is intended for the purpose of congregational singing. FUMC holds a CCLI license to stream this material. Copies of our licenses are on file in the church office. Now in news about our webpage, oneumc.com, there is a new section right under the top of the main page. That section has three new buttons, one to connect directly to Facebook Live, one to connect to the Web, WebEx live stream, and one that'll take you directly to the attendance register. We hope this will make it easier for you to navigate our site. On the home page, there's also a new section named New Video Content this week, where you may easily find and view any services, Bible studies, or special content published in the last seven days. Also under the church news tab, we've added a button to take you directly to the Holston Conference news page. We're ramping up our presence on social media, so we ask you to follow us on Instagram at First UMC Madville, that's new, on Twitter. First UMC Madville on Twitter and One UMC M on Twitter. On Twitter. And, um, and like us on Facebook at First UMC Madisonville. Doing so will keep you in the loop as we send out news and information on all three platforms. On that note, if you have news or content you would like to share with your church family on oneumc.com or our social media outlets, from the main page, just click on Church News and let us know on the Got News For Us feature. You can give us the news as well as upload pictures or short videos. We'll get that info out appropriately to the church family on social media or on the website. We continue to move forward with plans to open our church building up for in-person worship starting March 14th, providing the numbers of the new COVID-19 cases are declining the two weeks prior to the 14th. You should all have received an email by now asking for volunteers for in-person sanctuary worship services. If you're willing to help and have not already responded, email Reba so that we can add your name to the list. March, April issues of Upper Room are in the white toad at the front entrance to our sanctuary. Please stop by at your convenience and pick up a copy for yourself, family, and friends as long as they are available. If you want the digital copy, please email Reba and she will get it to you. Good Shepherd is still asking for green beans, canned tomato products, and uh, I'm sure any other canned vegetables. Blessing Box is still being heavily visited. Uh, and they, they are uh, a lot of prepackaged foods and snacks for children is very much needed. I ask you now to digitally greet the members of our church family and our guests via text or Facebook. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also, and also with you. The call to worship is stand up and bless the Lord.
And now I'm going to read the call to worship. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. He fulfills the desire of all who fear him. The Lord has made known his victory. Our help is in the name of the Lord. The hymn of praise is in the cross of Christ our glory. of faith today is the Nicene Creed, so please join me as we repeat this. Christians, whenever you are asked what you believe, you may answer with this. We believe in one God, the, the Father, Father, the Almighty, Almighty maker of heaven and earth, and all that is, seen, seen and, and unseen. We believe, believe in one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten God, of the Father, God from, from God. God light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, on the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, we believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and life to come of the world to come. Amen. Join us now for the Gloria Patri. Oh, my God. 
Good morning. Last night Keith called or texted me about 11 o'clock. He texted some of us and said he wasn't feeling good. We were hoping by the day a miracle would happen and he would be feeling better. But when I talked to him this morning, he didn't feel any better. So we're, we're going to pray for Keith that he has a quick recovery, find out what's going on with him and feels better here in the next few days. So we're, we're working two people um, down on our team today. Uh, Leanne is in Knoxville with Kay and then we're down to uh, down with Keith. So we've got our five person team plus Dwayne here and uh, all of us are taking apart uh, Steve, uh, Richard, Jan, Reba and I and Dwayne's our audience of one today. So we are trying to fill in the gaps and, and have a semi-regular service. So I I usually write the prayer request and keep up with all that, so I'm going to be the one that uh, goes through the prayer request one more time. A lot of you get them on Saturday. Some of you haven't read them yet, so uh, one or two updates. I've got a praise that I didn't get in there yesterday, and I meant to, and it's an exciting praise. Uh, we have a new church grandbaby, Libby Joy Chester. is the uh, granddaughter of Chad and uh, Margaret Chester. She was born in Jackson. They went over on Monday, and uh, they uh, said the nine. It took nine hours for a five and a half hour usual trip. So they they are back home now. But little Libby Joy Chester was born this week in Jackson, Tennessee. We want to congratulate Chad and Margaret and the family on the birth of this beautiful little baby girl. So for prayer concerns, um, please continue to pray for the Peters family. They had a, a private service yesterday for the wine and hopefully this spring they plan to do something maybe out on the farm where we can all go and show our respects and our love for Dwayne. But please uh, continue to pray for the Peters family as they go through the next few days and few weeks and uh, just keep them in your prayers. And also continue to pray for the Cabot family. Uh, Steve Cabot, Shane's dad died last week. And uh, still, it's just, uh, just just been a week and since all the, uh, the services and everything, please, the, the family needs to be kept in your prayers. Um, be in prayer for the Poole family. Rusty's father, Bill Poole, passed away yesterday. Uh, well, he passed away, um, I guess, Friday in Florida where he lived. And they'll be going down there sometime this week to gather with the family to remember Bill. But be in prayer for Rusty and Wendy and their family. Mary Alice Huff spent a night in UT Hospital. She's back home now. Uh, got some antibiotics that she's taken and, and uh, just... Uh, just She's feeling much better. Got to come home after a one night study and uh, keep Mary Alice in your in your prayers. Continue to play for Kay Grubb and family. As I said, Leanne is up there with her today. Uh, she usually has been. And this week, the end of the week, they inserted a feeding tube into Kay's stomach to try to get more nourishment into her. Well, this, as usual with Kay, it was one step forward, two step backwards. This set off some other problems and uh, in some of the processing, um, one of her lungs collapsed. So now they're trying to get everything back in order on that. So there's just more things going on with Kay and it seems like they do one thing and something else happens. So she's still in ICU and they desperately need our prayers. And Faye Watson is still rehabbing after her stroke and she's in Madisonville nursing and rehab, uh, you know, cards and I'm sure she would love to hear from folks. And Regina Warfel had surgery about a week and a half ago and continues to rehab after her surgery. Uh, get, keep Regina in your prayers. A uh, friend of Jan, Larry, Clifford Talon continues to need prayers. Continue to pray for Bob and Margaret Marshall. In addition to uh, Margaret's been in quarantine, she's finally out of that uh, for um, a few days ago, but she's not been strong enough to do her cancer treatment uh, this session, so they postponed it for two weeks. So she and Bob continue to need our prayers. And pray for Emma Tate, who is adjusting to life at Dominion um, in Athens. Um, earlier this week, Kristen, um, Kristen, Slack, Kristen Jackson, Jackson Slasher and her husband Chris uh, had their third uh, child. Uh, she was born about a month early, surprised them all, and uh, she was taken to Children's for some uh, extra, extra care. And uh, from what I've heard, she's doing well. So please, please play a Pray, say a prayer for the Slusher family. Um, Josh Kefauver, Mary and David's son, has been, been battling COVID. He's going to have upcoming hip surgery on March the 10th. So he's going to need plenty of prayers. 
continue to play for the Watkins family. Jordan's rehabbing from surgery, and Josh is out driving in this bad weather. Has had some trips up north and everything, so he needs a uh, continued prayers for Josh as he continues to drive long distance and all the bad weather. Uh, Kevin Shaw is asking for prayers for his grandmother Jean White and uh, continued prayers for Otis Thornton. Uh, Storm Mill Saps has been a little bit under the weather and uh, prayers for her would be nice too. Cooper Burks, we've prayed for Cooper for two or three years now. He's a friend of the Coop, uh, Kefauver family. Cooper's a teenager now and he's had to go back to Mayo Clinic because of more infections and surgery. This poor young man has been in and out of the hospital many times and really, really needs a prayer. And Lindsay Lazeski is scheduled to go back to school this week, and she's been out for quite a few weeks now. She'll be on crutches trying to get around Sequoia, so she's gonna need our prayers. And they had a big birthday yesterday, or Zeke had a big sixth birthday yesterday, so they've had some good things this week, and Lindsay, I'm sure, is very anxious about going back to school. Kristen Pennington's grandfather, Jack Newman, continues to need our prayers. Always keep those on our cancer list uh, in your prayers. Mabel Graham, Dora, I've talked to Dora this week, and she's in between treatments right now, so she, she continues to need her prayers. Pat Harvey, Debbie Denton, Beatrice Irwin, Barbara Raper, Maria Nelson, Clifton Greenwood, Leslie Havenagel, their families and all others battling cancer. So we have lots of prayer concerns. Please continue to keep feeding me the prayer concerns and we'll let folks know. And if uh, for some reason we don't get one out that you give, let me know because this, this, we have a lot of people on our prayer list and we're trying to keep up with everybody. So please let us know if we need to add names. One thing you can do to really help us too, if you've got people on the prayer list, especially the, the one in the newsletter, let us know if somebody's well and come off the prayer list, needs to come off. And everybody we know needs prayer, but we've got a lot of folks on there and we, we want to keep up with who they are and, what's going on, but if you do have people that, that need to come off, that they've had a blessing and they're doing better, let us know, let Reber I know, and, and we, will, we will adjust that list too. I'm gonna turn it over now to Steve Tweed. I've been asked this morning, <coughs> uh, to uh, do the prayer. So let us pray. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, how majestic is your name in all the earth? As one of your students, Alpha and Omega, come to mind, but as one of your children, Heavenly Father is how we come to you today. We pray your will be done this day on February the 21st, 2021, and the arrival of your kingdom we look for with great anticipation. We have many needs, Father, those that Sue has just mentioned, dear Lord. We pray that you will be with those folks. Help them in each and every need. Also those we have not mentioned, dear Lord, be with those as well. Be with our pastor Keith. He is under the weather and we truly miss him. Our parents, our children, our spouses, our friends, we all have certain needs, dear Lord, and please help us in our hour of need. COVID-19 uh, continues to take our loved ones and be with us, dear Lord. Forgive us the things we normally do wrong, the people we hurt, and in doing so, we hurt ourselves. It seems some, sometimes it is our nature to mess up, but if we keep our eye on you, it will be much less likely to happen. There is much to tempt us, dear Lord. Help us to recognize every day when you are near, through a song, a poem, a joke, laughter, a tear. Help us, dear Lord, and come to us. Help us to recognize your presence in them. We all, um, all we have, dear Lord, is yours, and we recognize that fact. Help us to use the skills we each have for your purpose. As Jesus, your son, prayed this prayer some 2,000 years ago, 
We continue to pray it today. And Father, we love you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The next song we will be singing is The Old Rugged Cross.
got back to the piano, I realized I think I had skipped a few prayer concerns. I think I didn't get them on there. Uh, I, and one of them is Steve's uh, father-in-law, Steve Tweed's father-in-law and sister-in-law, both to still... Uh, uh, Paul has been in and out of the hospital, and uh, the Janet's sister's been uh, um, battling COVID. And Megan, uh, Megan and Shane have some friends up in Loudoun County too that uh, have uh, been battling COVID and other things. So just keep all these folks; they're in the bulletin, and uh, just keep all these folks in your prayers. In addition to the ones we name, sometimes it's hard to get everybody. Sometimes the list it's I just I think I just missed something. <laughs> So uh, just please keep all those people, all those people in your prayers. Just pray, as I say my, uh, on the website, pray, 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 or, as we do in our weekly uh, prayer concerns. So just pray for, pray for everybody. I'm going to do uh, the children's time. So children gather around. This is Keith's children's sermon. So I'm going to do it today. Uh, Keith is very good about uh, you know having his things here for us. Uh, and everything so we've got his material we just don't have him and we do miss him and the children's sermon today is does the old testament say anything about jesus what do you think does the old testament say anything about jesus or do we just start hearing about jesus in the new testament we read a lot about jesus in the new testament but what about the old testament does the old testament say anything about jesus christ our savior yes it does the teachings about Jesus in the Old Testament are foretelling. That means things that are they're, they're being told, told beforehand. We call them prophecies. God gave lots of clues about his son, whom he would and did send into the world. God would and did send his son into the world to save us all. Here are a few of the prophecies. Jesus would be born of a virgin, which was told in Isaiah 7.14, which is in the Old Testament, fulfilled in the New Testament, Matthew 1.23. Jesus would be born in Bethlehem, prophesied Micah in 5.2, and it was fulfilled in the New Testament, Luke 2.4-7. Jesus would be taken to Egypt, prophesied Hosea 11.1, and it was fulfilled in Matthew. Jesus would die on a cross for sinners. It was prophesied in Isaiah, way back in Old Testament times, and fulfilled in Matthew. Jesus said that there were so many good things in the Old Testament. It is God's word, like the New Testament. Jesus quoted the Old Testament and said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Then, days later, Jesus added this, A new command I give, love one another. As I have loved you, so love one another in John 13. So, there are things in the Old Testament that foretell things in the New Testament. You need to read both of them and it's a complete story. Let's pray. Lord, bless our children. We do so miss seeing them. We've missed a year of watching them grow, and it's always exciting to see them in our presence. Be with them as they study their Bible, and be with them as we begin to make plans to come back together and we get to see them again. They are our children, and we love them. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. The uh, scripture lesson today is from Matthew 15, 1 through 11, and then 21 through 28. It's interesting that the scripture uh, today really talks about church folks. Uh, it uh, is about uh, us. I sometimes worry that uh, what I think is important really is not really what's important to, to God, and that was true with, in this particular case too. So, uh, that which defiles the tradition of the elders. The Pharisees and scribes came to Jesus from Jerusalem and said, Why do your disciples break the traditions of the elders? For they do not wash their hands before they eat. He answered them, Why do you break the commands of God for the sake of your tradition? For God said, Honor your father and your mother, and whoever speaks evil of father or mother must surely die. But you say, 
whoever tells father or mother, whatever support you might have had from me is given to God, then that person need not honor the father. So for the sake of your tradition, you make void the word of God, you hypocrite. Isaiah prophesied rightly about when he said, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrine, things that defile. He called the crowd to him and said to them, listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. defiles. And then we go to uh, 21 through 28, the Canaanite woman, her faith. Jesus left the place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented, tormented by the demon. But he did not answer her at all. His disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps sh shouting after you. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you have wished. And her daughter was healed instantly. The word of God for the people of God. Thank Thanks be to God. I tell you, Nearly every time Jesus had conversations with Pharisees, they found something to criticize him or his disciples about. This was not just about washing your hands before dinner, like your mother or grandmother used to tell you. It had to do with ritual washings, added on to the law of Moses, to ensure that you were spiritually and ritually pure and untainted by the Gentile world around you. In living your faith, how did the Pharisees get this way? In the Old Testament times, the prophets told the people of Israel that they were not keeping the law of God, the law of Moses, well enough. That is why God allowed the Assyrians to conquer northern Israel in 722 BC, and why God allowed the Babylonians to conquer the rest of Israel and Jerusalem in 587 BC. After the leaders of Israel returned from captivity in Babylon around 500 BC, the religious leaders took seriously the warnings of the prophets and started to require people to obey the law of Moses more strictly. The synagogue movement came out of this. In addition to the temple in Jerusalem, they built a synagogue in every town and village where Jewish people could gather to pray and read scripture. Some Jewish men volunteered to be unpaid teachers or rabbis and very conservative rabbis became who we know as the Pharisees. They were almost fanatical about keeping the law and were very specific as how to keep the Ten Commandments and the rest of the law of Moses. All kinds of rules were to follow. The Pharisees were very concerned with what they, what they saw as correct rituals. Their ways of keeping the law of Moses very legalistic, detailed methods. This is what upset Jesus. The Pharisees had bent and twisted the laws of God to their liking and lost all real meaning. God had told Moses and the people of his day what Jesus meant in verse 4. God said, honor your mother and father. But you say, what I might have given to you. I gave to a Pharisee project for God, and you get nothing. Sorry, Mom and Dad. Jesus called them hypocrites for avoiding God's commands with pious excuses. Jesus then told his disciples and the crowd, God is concerned with what is in your heart and what you do because of your real caring and not with keeping thousands of man-made rules. Now, rituals are okay when they give us order and organize our beliefs and actions, but if they become ends in themselves, 
the rituals can actually push us away from our relationship with God. We can wind up serving a false God or serving ourselves. Then Jesus gives us a real, true life example of what he means. But to have faith to live. The faith of the Canaanite woman was another parable in real time. Let's be clear about what happens here. Jesus and his disciples moved north, north of Galilee, into Gentile territory, the region of Tyre and Sidon. There, a Gentile woman came to him. She had heard of the healer and rabbi, Jesus, and hoped that he could help her daughter, who suffered because of a demon. Now, Jesus was in Gentile territory. There were some Jewish people that lived there, but the majority of the people there were Gentiles. Jesus had ministered to Gentiles before and after this, but his disciples were dismissive, uncaring for her. Send her away. Jesus seemed to also have the same attitude when he said, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, he told her. This was sometimes the attitudes of conservative Pharisees. Jesus even, as Pharisees did, called her a dog, a Gentile dog. Jesus had healed Gentiles before. Why was he so mean to this woman? I think it was two things. He was letting people see how cruel and uncaring the rules of the Pharisees were. By saying what they said and Jesus was also testing her faith. Here is what Jesus found out about her. Number one, she had love, love for her daughter. William Barclay in his daily Bible study series points out that she made the misery of her child her own misery. Her love for her child looked like God's love for his children. Number two, she had faith, faith that grew from contact with Jesus. She started by addressing him as son of David. Soon she was calling him Lord. Three, she had a worshiping faith. She began by following Jesus, shouting. She ended up on her knees. She started shouting her request. She ended almost in prayer before Jesus. Fourth, she had a persistent faith. Nothing discouraged her from asking Jesus for help for her child. The dismissal of her by the disciples didn't discourage her. Jesus telling her that he only came to the children of Israel that didn't stop her. Even Jesus calling her a Gentile dog, that did not stop her. She was not going to take no for an answer. And she had hopeful faith. She was almost lighthearted in answering Jesus. Yes, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the table. She had faith in God, that God would work through Jesus, which was exactly what Jesus was talking about concerning the Pharisees. Jesus said, woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And the Gospel of Matthew tells us that her daughter was healed that very hour in verse 28, chapter 15. We all need faith, real deep faith in what God can do in our lives, in big, major things, even in mundane things. Let me tell you about a young woman named Brenda. She wanted to learn rock climbing. Although she was scared to death, she went with a group and they faced a tremendous cliff of rock, practically perpendicular. In spite of her fear, she put on the gear, she took a hold of the rope, and she started up the face of that rock. Well, she got to a ledge where she could take a breather. As she was hanging on there, whoever was holding the rope at the top of the cliff made a mistake and snapped the rope against Brenda's left eye and knocked out her contact lens. You know how tiny contact lenses are and how almost impossible they are to find? Well, here she is on a rock ledge with who knows how many hundreds of feet behind her and hundreds of feet above her. Of course, she looked and looked, hoping that she would find that contact lens. Here she was, very far from home. Her sight was now blurry. She was very upset by the fact that she wouldn't be anywhere near a place where she could get a new contact lens. And so she prayed that the Lord would help her find it. Well, her last hope was that perhaps when she got to the top of the cliff, 
one of the girls that was up there on the top might be able to find her contact lens in the corner of her eye. When she got to the top, a friend examined her eye. There was no contact lens, lens to be found. She sat down with the rest of the party, waiting for the rest of them to come up, to the, uh, come up the face of the cliff. She looked out across range after range of mountains, thinking of that Bible verse that says, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. She thought, Lord, you can see all these mountains. You know every single stone and leaf that's on those mountains, and you know exactly where my contact lens is. Finally, the time came when it was time to go down. They walked down the trail to the bottom. Just as they got there, there was a new party of rock climbers coming along. As one of them started up the face of the cliff, she shouted, Hey, you guys, anybody lose a contact lens? Well, that wouldn't be startling enough, would it? She had found the contact lens, but you know why she saw it? An ant was carrying that contact lens so that it was moving slowly across the face of the rock. What does that tell you about the God of the universe? Is he in charge of the tiniest things? Do ants matter to him? Of course they do. He made them, he designed them. Brenda said that her father is a cartoonist and when she told him this incredible story, he drew a picture of that ant lugging that content lens and you can practically see in the comics with a balloon um, over his head, the words, Lord, I don't know why you want me to carry this thing. I can't eat it and it's awfully heavy. But if this is what you want me to do, I'll carry it for you. God, if God is in charge of the ants, don't you think he cares about you and me? I guess Solomon was right. <clears throat> One can learn a valuable lesson from that ant. Trust in God. We could probably all say a little more often, God, I don't know why you want me to carry this load I see no good in it, and it is awfully heavy. Still, if you want me to, I'll carry it for you. Sometimes we carry heavy burdens in life. We may not know why, but God has plans for us that we just don't know yet. Have faith. I promise you that God will be faithful to you if you trust in him. Now. Let's close by singing Spirit of Faith, Come Down.
One of the things that we forgot to do this morning was mention the fact that all that we have comes from God. And in keeping with the Bible, with what we're taught, we need to give back to God. You can give several ways. You can mail a check to our post office box 157 here in Madisonville. You can call me or Sue, the church office, and find out when we're going to be in the office if you want to drop it by. The easiest way may be to go to our website, oneumcm.com, and click on the tithing cap tab. It gives you all the directions on how to do, you know, give online. But we do need funds to continue the work that we do. We're not meeting in person, but we are still doing work for God, and we do need funds to make that possible. So we appreciate anything that you give. So let us just say a short prayer and thank God for the blessings that we have received. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for everything that you give us, and we know that it's all yours. It's just ours to use. And as we give back to you, no matter how we give this week, we ask that you bless those gifts that we receive, multiply them so that we can do the work that we need to do for our community, for our county, for, for everyone that is in need. We thank you for your blessings, and we ask that you bless these offerings that come in during this week. Amen. And now for our benediction, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. Amen. And join us in our... Don't forget to record your attendance and join us in our benediction. Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart. <laughs>